This is Boxing with the Truth, and I am the Truth. Uh, it's January 29th, 2017, and today we have with us Christian Camacho. How you doing today, Christian? I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing great. And uh, just for the fans out there, if you're wondering, yes, he is the son of legendary Hector Macho Camacho, and also the brother of uh, Camacho uh, Jr who also uh, both were very good fighters. But uh, Christian's trying to make his own path. And uh, so far you're uh, actually five wins, one loss, and one win by knockout, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. And you're fighting at featherweight? Actually, I fight at super bantamweight, but we can't find anybody that wants to fight me at 122. So um, I've been fighting pretty much anywhere from 122 to 130, 128. Okay, and you're 24 years old right now, so I mean, you you have a lot of time yet. I mean, uh, and hopefully we're going to see you win a world title. Yep, that's soon to come. Hopefully within a year or two. Okay, and um, you know, I want to start off real quick. A lot of people um, in the sport of boxing who follows it, there's a lot of uh, sons that come up of legendary boxers. Some do well, some don't do well. Uh, some have it easy. And some don't. And unfortunately, you're one of them that haven't had it easy. You haven't had a lot of things handed to you. Like a lot of fans would think because your brother was a famous boxer, your dad was a legendary boxer, that uh, doors would just open up for you, that you'd have it easy, you'd be in the best gyms, everybody would be matching up great fights for you, you'd be making a lot of money. And that's not the case, right? I mean, to a certain extent, yeah, but at the same time, no. You know, I mean, I, I thank my dad and I commend it all. Of course, my brother, both my dad, for everything they've done in their careers. But in all reality, all they've done is just kind of shy people away or kind of give people the idea that, you know, I'm something that they think I'm not. You know, I've, I've battled every every amateur fight, every fight, actually every professional fight. I've paid for my opponent and for my flight, and i paid for all the hotel stays out of my own pocket. Well, not every single one, but the majority of them. So, um... You know, I mean, it, the, the, the sport of boxing is really a business, and, you know, I'm saying I'm going about it out of a different aspect just because I don't have the help of my father or, or my brother. I, mean, I wish I did, but, you know, um, my father's not with us, and, you know, may he, he rest in peace, but, you know, it, it, it's my chance and my opportunity to make my own thing and um, do my own thing the way I want to do it, run my career the, the way I want to run it and the way it should be run. But um, it's a hard, long road, but, you know, it's a road that I'm willing to take. And, and, you know, one day at a time, one fight at a time. Okay, and what was your relationship like with your father? Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's a little weird. It's a little crazy, you know, a little crazy relationship just because, you know, when my father was the world champion and when he was on top of the world, I mean, I was born in 92, so when I was born, my dad was in the height of his career. He fought Charlie in 92. So, um, you know, I mean, I didn't really get to know my dad much because by the time I was getting old enough, it was who my dad was. And at that time, you know, my dad had his, of course, everybody has their pros and cons, but, you know, at that time, my dad was, had a lot, of, uh, a lot of dark demons in his life, and, you know, uh, the best thing was for him to be away from us. So, um, you know, my mom didn't want to see us, you know, see us being raised around somebody with all his flaws at that time. But, um... You know, as I got older, I, I, I built the best relationship with my dad. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying who my dad was. and I, I mean, I was the closest to him out of all the sons. But by the time I was 18, 19 years old, my dad passed away. So I only really know my dad three, four years out of my whole life. I really got the time to know who my dad really was. So it was a short time, but it was really the best time. Okay, and, 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 enough time. <laughs> and how is your relationship with your brother right now? Um, you know, I mean, everyone is, well, basically when my father passed away, things, of course, you know, it, it, in every family, um, it goes a little rocky, but, you know, me and my other two brothers, um, we really, really close, we were tight, um, but, uh, you know, me and my, uh, Hector Jr.'s relationship was rocky, I said, listen, it's just getting better, and, you know, one day, this wouldn't even be a topic anymore, because, you know, brothers shouldn't be going through stuff like this. Okay, but, and, and your mother is actually... <laughs> a lot better than what it was. And your mother is actually your manager, right? Yes, Amy Camacho, which is my mother. Not the same mother as Junior, but uh, the same uh, mother as uh, Justin and Tyler, uh, my father, the other two kids. 
But um, yeah, she is my manager. She knows a thing or two as well. She she's a football father since the beginning. So um, and a lot of people might not have been. She might not have been the official uh, manager, but she definitely was the acting manager. She uh, definitely had a headache with him. So. Okay, and for people that don't know, I mean, you were a pretty exceptional amateur boxer. I mean, you had over 150 amateur fights. Uh, you were two-time Florida State Golden Gloves champion, um, New York Golden Gloves champion, um, under-19 tournament medalist, right? Yes, correct. Uh, I actually never won the Golden Gloves championship in, um, in New York. Uh, I had the opportunity to... Uh, to um, a little bit of politics, but I actually, uh, I actually won the Spanish ones in New York and took second place at, um, the USA men. So I thought I pulled it out against, uh, pro fighter now, Titus Williams, who I think is kind of nowhere, let him know, who's actually an exceptional fighter from New York. But, um, I never won the Golden Gloves. I wish I did. But uh, it's more I definitely did. Okay. And now you've moved around quite a bit because you started out in New York and then uh, you were out in Las Vegas, out in Mayweather's gym for a while, right? And are you down in Florida now? Well, I mean, um, I'm actually originally from New York. Um, and I actually went to high school and middle school and elementary and, um, in Florida. Um, but now I have a daughter. So I'm actually back in Florida. Um, but I'm actually from New York. My family's out here. And my dad seriously bought a house out here in Orlando. So this is really kind of like my home. Where I'm originally from, um, but you know, uh, my whole life, like I told you, I learned a lot of summer I spent a couple of uh, summers with my dad, and um, I picked up a lot of fights. A lot of people say, you know, how does he get so many fights? Um, it was actually because in the summer times, I would spend, you know, training camp with my dad, and um, I would actually go and fight amateur fights, you know, and it was a time where we were in Tucson, Arizona, and Denver, Colorado, and uh, the last few was Mississippi, and every year it was a different, a different city. So I would rack up, you know, 10, 15, 20 fights in the summertime, and then go back home, and then, you know, fight once every month, you know, and then I was fight every year. I was racking up, you know, 30, 40 fights every year. So I have, you know, uh, I wasn't the best amateur fighter. I wasn't really wanted to stand up because my style was really, you know, a professional fighter, everything off the jab, and that's not really, that wasn't really the amateur, the amateur style of today. But, um, you know, hopefully my, my, my style and my skills translate into the professional ring. Okay, and some uh, some people might not know that you're actually in college right now as well, right? Trying to get, is it a business degree? <laughs> yeah, actually, I was actually in college. I've been in college for, God, for forever. It feels like it's been a, I'm actually almost done. I'm in my last semester at Gallup. I'm going to finish up my last semester. I've been on taking my business marketing management. Um, and I'm actually going to finish up my last semester. So that's, you know. That's the promise I made to mom that I was gonna you know, get you know get my high school diploma and get a degree for her and now I got you know live up to the promise of my dad of becoming a world champion. So it's just fulfilling promise and that's it. <laughs> okay, so do you have any superstitions or rituals or habits that you have to do before a fight? <laughs> uh I mean not really, but I always ask myself before I walk out to the locker room, are you really just damn crazy? Are you really are you really just damn crazy to be doing this? But, you know what I'm saying? That's just my question to myself. Like, are you really crazy enough to, to, to get in the ring and let somebody hit you? And I look at myself right in the mirror and I say, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> that's just kind of like my little, my little pump up session because you got to be a big enough to get in the ring if like, you really do. So tell me something of an activity outside of boxing that you enjoy doing that has nothing to do with the sport. Um, well, I mean, having a daughter now, um, you know, the little one that keeps me everywhere, keeps me going. With, um, I, just, I, I didn't know walking down, the, you know, walking in park and, and taking a little bike ride was so fun. But those are little things I like to do with my baby. But besides that, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really involved in people. Um, in the community a lot with the, with the homeless. My mom works for a, uh, a university, a college. Um, she's the marketing director over there, and um, they work a lot with the homeless, so at least once or twice a month. I'll go out and feed the homeless and clothe the homeless, and it's a cosmetology school, so we cut the homeless there. Um, I work a lot with a lot of the uh, elementary schools. Um, I visited a couple of elementary schools. We just you know, talk to people and try to motivate. I, I, I like, you know, I'm really big at the, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm really big at the inspirational speaker, uh, speaking and, and I like to speak to people and, and, and talk to people on how to encourage themselves because we've all had dark moments and I've had some of the darkness and, and if I'm able to do it, anybody's able to do it. So. 
it was just, you know, a few things I like to do outside the gym besides play basketball with the boys. And of course, Sunday night football, of course, you know, I'm a big Giants fan and, and, and sporting events. That's what everybody likes to do. But um, on my spare time, I really like to get back and, and, and to meet new people and, and really network, you know, and just know everybody, you know, put yourself aside and worry about the next person for one. Okay, so what does it mean to you to be a pro boxer? I mean, a lot of people look at it, you know, I look at a lot of professional fighters um, nowadays, and, um, you know, it's all about it's all about a check. You know, it's all about money. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's trying to live this life that they're dreaming about. You know, I just want to be happy. I want to live a, a prosperous life, you know, and I want, to, I want my family to be secure. That's, that's what everybody wants, you know what I mean? Maybe boxing is my, is my, my road to success, you know? But, um, but in all, I'm really trying to, trying to think about, like I told you, a dream. I've always wanted to be a world champion. I've always wanted to, to follow the best of my dad. And, and money isn't what's encouraging me, it's the legacy. You know what I'm saying? That's what's really motivating me to succeed. And, and, being a professional fighter, you know, money for somebody, you know, all these guys are just animals. They're going in a cage or in a ring. They're just going to go beat the hell out of each other. That's not the case, you know. For, for a lot of these people, it's how they feed their families, you know, it's how they put clothes on their kids' backs, you know. And and, and I, I took my hat and I respect anybody who steps in the ring because I've had opponents in the past where it's just been for money. You know what I'm saying? But then I've had opponents in the past that are really trying to take my head off because they want it just as bad as I want it. They want to be a world champion. You know what I'm saying? So everybody has a meaning of what they're fighting for, and that really just signifies everybody's life. You know, every day's a struggle, every day's a fight. You know what I'm saying? Every day's uh, another day for survival. And, and, and that's what boxing really is to me. It's just life. It's really my life. It's something I've been doing for all my life. Okay, so. so just get in there every day and fight for what I love and what I need. What I need to survive for my family—it just really signifies boxing as life for me. So, tell me someone that inspires you in your life, inside and outside the ring. I definitely, I definitely got to tip my hat to my mom. She's, she's, she's definitely a, a fighter. She's definitely a, a trooper. She's um, she's done it all by herself for her whole life. You know what I'm saying? She raised her, her, her brother, her sisters, because her mother had you know an addiction, and then. She married my father and took on a role with something, you know, she had to step up to the plate and then my father was out the house for 15 or 15 years. My mom held it down. She just really did her thing. You know what I'm saying? She made sure we was always well kept and that was without the help or without the assistance of my dad at all. And and she she definitely pulled it together. So, you know, I, I commend, you know, I commend my mom with, with every ounce of might in my body because she she's really my superhero. And then, of course, inside the ring, you know, everybody likes Floyd and, and Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, all these main fighters, but I'm not saying my dad's my superhero inside the ring or my favorite fighter, but he's my favorite fighter not because he's my dad, but just because he was talented, he was gifted, he was a street kid, you know what I'm saying? He's from Harlem, nobody ever made it out of Harlem until he made it out of Harlem. And, 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 and that was a drug infested area and, and he'd be crying, he'd be poverty and he'd be all doubt. Everything was straight against him and he came out of the shit and became somebody. You know, he really was a diamond at the rough and, and and I commend him too for doing what he did for himself. You know what I'm saying? Beating beating all odds. So those are just two people I definitely want to be like when I get older, you know what I'm saying? A continuous warrior, a continuous fighter, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make the best out of nothing. And, and those are not my parents, so those are my two superheroes. Okay. Now, um, I know a lot of uh, things need to be worked out and stuff uh, for your next date, but there's a possible um, date of April 1st, 2017. You could be in the ring. Um, there's locations, different locations possible. Um, we're talking maybe a June fight. So there's a lot of calls and a lot of things going on, a lot of opponents you guys got to pick through and things like that. So a lot of things right now are going on in your career, right? It's, it's, it's crazy how things are finally taking off. Um, you know, a couple, uh, a couple of years back, I fought, um, I was training with, uh, you know, with Peter Quillen. I like the planning, uh, uh, going out to uh, uh, California and training with Abner Morris. And then I had the opportunity to fight with, uh, I'm going to train with the, you know, they were at his camp. And, and I was just an amateur, just grinding every day. I lived 
damn near homeless in, in Vegas. I flew out there with my cousin, he was 18, 19 years old, no longer lived in Vegas, you know, with an apartment, no food, no car, no nothing. We hiked two hours, two miles to the gym every day in that Las Vegas heat. But we did it because we knew what we wanted, we had a dream. And um, we just continuously, continuously kept on trying and trying and trying to work in Vegas. I didn't work in Mexico for a fight out there. We was, Rob, that was number one, mistreated was number two. We ended up fighting somebody with nine fights. They were nine and one on, on, on off the books as a Mexican professional. You know what I'm saying? So the guy had was nine and zero when I fought him. But in, on record, he was one and one or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had a major setback when I first had my first pro debut in Mexico City uh, in, in a high altitude, and, and, and it was just a ridiculous outcome. And I wish I never did it, but. You know what I'm saying? I had the jitters and I wanted to fight and I wanted to turn pro, so we thought Mexico was the, was the great idea. So you know what? It really did it. And I learned my lesson. I really learned my lesson. And just to take my time and, and I gave it a couple of years and now everything's taking off because I put in the work. I'm I, I grinding every day. I sit in the gym. I eat right. I sleep right. I walk around and I fight weight. I walk no more than four or five pounds over my weight. I don't have to kill myself to go down the weight. Um, I'm doing everything right well, I say I hope I'm doing everything right let me say that but I'm doing everything possible you know just to make more doors open up for myself and, and I think if I continue to get in the ring and take any opportunity that's given my way and, and just continue fighting and, and staying active you know what I mean this guy's doing it so, you know we got a lot of things happening this year and just take it one step at a time Okay, so now, I know uh, you've been working with Mercedes Simmons at, at Pretty Girl Promotions, and she's got this series that she's putting together called uh, Queen City Boxing Series. It's actually a tournament style. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, I, I love Mercedes. She's, she's an amazing woman. Um, she's great for the sport of boxing, you know. I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, boxing's really a man's sport, and she's coming into the boxing, and she's making it really a... Uh, She's not feminizing it at all. She's just making it for the viewers. You know, this is a woman in the game now. And and for her to start putting some type of series, the boxing kind of, uh, what was that one series they had to put a little weight, but think Andre Ward won it? Super, super six or something like that? Yep. For her to be, for her to, um, to be starting a, a, a little tournament style, I think that's awesome. That's something I would always be down to do. The more fights, the better, you know? Um, I just, I, I, I'm just happy to be working with her, and you know, I mean, the more fights, more opportunities. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm definitely open to always work with Mercedes and pretty much anybody. So, what are your goals personally in, in the sport of boxing for 2017? Where, where do you want to be at the end of this year? Um, just you know, I just want to be hopefully a step closer to where I, where my dreams are at. You know, I definitely want to be a world title, so I think 2017 is my year to um, definitely put myself in contention to be a, a, a future prospect or most definitely a, a, a future contender. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know by the end of the year, I possibly can be in contention, and maybe there's a possibility that I might still have some more work to put in. But um, I just hope by the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, that that. Every household knows who Christian Camacho is, and and if they don't, by now they will soon. Okay. Do you have a favorite boxing movie? Favorite boxing movie? Oh. Uh, uh, I don't know. Every boxing movie is kind of funny to me. I feel like my father beat them all. The one that he did was with uh, the and uh, they had the about uh, the ramp fight with both of them. Um, I'll definitely have to say the Ali play. I mean, it has more meaning, you know, as they show how a man really, how a man really came from nothing and, and he stood up for his beliefs. You know, I mean, he stood up for his beliefs. He didn't think that he should be going over there to fight the war. And you know what? That, that, I have a right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, and, and I'm showing you and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking my right and I'm willing to, to spend my life in jail to, to, to go ahead and do the movement of what I'm speaking. You know, I mean, he definitely showed everybody that he was the world champion, that he was the greatest. And he definitely talked that a whole lot of crap, but he definitely, definitely, definitely stepped it back up. And, and I took my hat and made rest in peace as well, Paul and Ali. Okay, I want to bring up, uh, if some people aren't aware, you actually just did an interview about two weeks ago. 
on a YouTube <laughs> show called uh, Jericho Show, and one of the guys on there is actually a friend of yours. And uh, I just recently watched, and I thought it was really funny. And and for your fans, if uh, you know if they enjoy watching your interviews and stuff, I think uh, I mean it was an unscripted interview. It's unedited. I mean, you're swearing, they're swearing. It, it, it's a really good time to actually watch. So I encourage the boxing fans that get into just unedited and, and live interviews and, and just to have fun to go on YouTube, watch uh, the Jericho Show. Um, there's a lot of different uh, stuff on there, but one of their biggest guests recently is Kristen Camacho, and I thought it was a great interview. And um, so everybody definitely tune in to the Jericho Show on the YouTube. Yeah, some great guys there, some great guys. They don't know too much about boxing. They think it's all about the MMA and UFC, but... <laughs> um, I, went there. I, I definitely, I, I definitely gave him a piece in my mind. I know Eric was, uh, which is my buddy. I know he's a big uh, Ronda Rousey fan, so I kept on telling him that uh, she had to retire. And uh, I know Jericho is just a big, um, he's a big uh, MMA guy as far as wrestling. He, he used to wrestle in high school and stuff like that. So he you knows me. I play him all about the family game, and I'll, and I'll put my hands against his wrestling any day. So I, I don't think I don't think they were too fond of me, but I definitely had a great time there. All right, well, listen, I got one question left for you, Kristen, before we end the interview. Um, I know you talked about how you like giving back and uh, helping the homeless and things like that in the sport. So if a kid was to walk in the gym tomorrow, what advice would you give him about boxing? Oh, man, what did I start? Um, if a kid walks in, well, you have more kids that walk into our gym every day. You know, at Battle Park of Fitness in, um, in, in Pennsylvania, Florida. And um, every day I tell them, listen, boxing is good. I got all the skills in the world. I got talent. But talent can only take you as far as you work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't like to run. A lot of people don't like to put in that road work. But guess what? If you want to be great, you got to do something that's going to make you great. You got to do what everybody else doesn't like to do. And that is to get your ass up in the morning and run. That's what you have to do. You have to do all the stuff necessary to become a champion. If that's what you want, you can't just put 50% in. You can't put a hand or 110% in. You got to put in everything you got. You got to put in everything you got. And of course, the most important punch, you jab. You jab is your defense. That's your offense. That's how you set up, set up your combination. That's how you get in, in, uh, out of trouble, get off the ropes. That's how you keep everything going. That's the most important punch in the fight. So those are definitely my two pointers to anybody who starts boxing, anybody even even women in the streets, you know what? If a guy tries to come in and 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 the purse, just hit him with a jab real quick. And definitely that definitely knock him out or, or keep it on his toes. But you know, give everything you got and, and keep letting that jab snap. Get on your stick and just keep popping that jab because that that's what's gonna open the door for you. Well, Kristen, I appreciate you taking time off for Boxing with the Truth. Uh, is there anything you want to say to your family, or your friends out there, or your fans before we end? Um, family and friends, so I just want to thank everybody um, for being with me. Um, I know it's a long road and we still got so much more to go, but it's just, I just love the motivation and all the encouragement and I love all my friends and family. And of course the fans and future fans and, and people we want to hate or even people who want, want to love and, and support. You know what? Christian Camacho is a name you're going to have to remember because it's coming. And this just might be the quiet. You guys might not hear about me now, but it's just the quiet before the storm. So. I'm coming and I'm, I'm definitely taking, taking boxing by storm in the future of boxing here at home. And of course, to you, thank you for having me for boxing with the truth. And, and, and I hope we can come back in a year or two and I can tell you guys I told you so. Most definitely. And the truth has spoken. <laughs>